In 1965, Ford released the first ever vehicle to be called an off-road sports vehicle, and it happened to be the Ford Bronco. Ford Bronco is one of the main nameplates of Ford, and it was reintroduced in 2021, and it's only got better ever since. Today we have the 2024 Ford Bronco Big Ben, and despite this being the entry-level Bronco in the lineup, it's still got a lot to offer. So let's see what it's got. All right, starting off in the front of this big bad boy, we've got the large classic throwback Bronco lettering right on the front. Looks absolutely amazing next to the OG circular headlights here, but they're not as original as you might think because they do have LED daytime running lights as well as LED automatic high beams and headlights. Not to mention too, they do have LED fog lights as well. But the front end is quite operational. You've got functional venting in the front here. And at the bottom here, you do have a couple tow hooks as well. Overall, looks really great. You've also got some accessory points up here. It does say it can only handle 150 pounds, but there are lots of accessories that you can put on this bad boy. Coming along to the side of the Bronco, we do have massive 31 inch all-terrain tires on it. And the wheels also look absolutely fantastic on it too. Really like the piano black with the silver on the outside here. Another really cool thing to note is that these fenders are actually removable. They've got some clips in there and you just pop them off. That way if you're going on the trail and you don't wanna bash them up, you don't have to. Another thing to mention while we're at the side of it is this does have Ford's signature Haas suspension system. It's supposed to make the Bronco the most capable and the goat of the road. Past that, we do have a Big Ben Sasquatch sticker. It actually looks pretty nice. Another thing that you'll notice, because the Bronco does have removable roofs and removable doors, the side view mirrors are actually bolted on below the windshield. So you've also got accessory points there as well, so you can mount cameras or whatever you want. But the mirrors themselves are also functional. They do have lane departure warning and blind spot monitoring and things like that. Overall, very nice. The handles for the doors are also interesting and unique too. Now they are just black, no big deal, but if you have the key in your pocket and the door is locked, it heat senses that you're there and it unlocks the doors and you can also just press that button to lock the door. Now straight from the factory, another thing that also looks really nice on the Bronco is you'll notice the back half is tinted, not the front. But nonetheless, it does help with the heat in the car and keeps it a little bit more livable. Now, we always talk about this, but the Bronco does accept normal 87 octane fuel, but it does get different performance based off of which octane fuel you get, but you can put normal octane fuel in here. Coming around to the rear, of course, to keep it that Bronco style, you do have a large spare tire that matches the rest of the set right here on the back with a high definition reverse camera as well. And I'll tell you what, it looks really good on the massive display on the inside. At the bottom though, you do have yet another tow hook, some parking sensors, and very nice LED taillights. They look great, but you do have a 50-50 split on your doors here. Looks really good though. Tons of cargo space, opens up nice and wide. You've got the exposed frame that is also color matched to the car. Overall, fantastic. But you've got a subwoofer stock in the back. You've also got some nice hooks here for tying things down, a bag to put your doors in when you ultimately decide to take those off because I know you will. But on the right hand side, you've got a little bit of power, a 12 volt outlet here, and then some Easter eggs. On the light here, you've got a, a pony. And then down here by the tow hook, you've also got a lasso and accessory ready doors too. So these are all ready for the Bronco accessories. You can hang things on there, hook them there, whatever you need to do so that you're ready on the trail. Now, aside from all of that, one last thing that's going on in the rear here is you do have a little bit of storage in the front section here with this sticky mat that I think is upside down, <laughs> as well as some roadside assistance things that you might need, like a jack or maybe a funnel. Now let's hop into the inside of this Bronco and see what it's got to offer. All right, getting into the Ford Bronco, the door's nice and light, especially because they want you to be able to take them off easily. You'll notice it doesn't have a lot of things we typically have on our doors, but you do have nice chrome door handles with this like rubberized barrel lock cylinder and your lock and unlock button, as well as a net 
for your storage needs, but you're missing your window switches, your side view mirror switches, and things like that. But these grab handles are also very nice. They're sturdy. But what's even cooler is you can actually replace them for different colors if you want. Ford sells different ones. I'm sure no other aftermarket retailers also do. So you can really stylize it up as much as you want. Now, the seats themselves are also fully manual. You don't have any power going on here. But one thing I will say is they are quite comfortable. But aside from that, it's actually a marine grade vinyl. So if it's exposed to the elements or anything like that, everything in here is supposed to last. All right, now on the interior of the Bronco where all the magic happens, you know, overall it's pretty nice. I will say right off the gate, it is a lot of plastic, but it's for a reason. It's all durable, waterproofed, marine grade plastic so that if you're driving and you've got your roof off and you can't hurry up and stop and put it on and it starts to rain suddenly, you're all good. But the steering wheel itself is actually quite nice. It's got a good thickness and it's nice and soft. Um, overall, feels really good. But on the left hand side here, you've got your driver's assistance function. So like keep lane assist, cruise control, and also your volume happens to be on the left hand side. Whereas on the right hand side, you've got more of your multimedia functions, your track skip, voice assistance, and things like that, as well as the buttons to control your digital gauge cluster. Speaking of the digital gauge cluster, you do have a seven inch screen as well as a analog speedometer. Now moving on beyond the steering wheel, you will notice that we only have one stock in this Bronco and that is for a reason. On the left hand side here we've got a stock for our high beams as well as our our front and rear wipers but below the steering wheel to the left is where we actually have our light controls so you can just set it to auto and set it and forget it and the Bronco will do the rest and then to the right of that we've got our brightness for our digital gauge cluster nicely optimized space there aside from all of that you know you, you get in the Bronco you got to get it comfortable for you to drive and this does have both tilt and telescoping action so you can get it adjusted however you like all right, now coming along to the right hand side of your steering wheel, you do have a massive high definition infotainment center here. And let me just show you real quick. When you put it in reverse, that is an absolute perfect view there. It doesn't get any more crisp than that. Ford did it right. Make sure that you can see but everything in here from self-updating maps to wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, and more off-trail things, you know, it's all lives right in there. And it's very responsive, it works quite well. But below there, we do have our auto start button, volume knob, as well as a tune knob, and our track seeking buttons. And then below there, we've got physical controls for all of our heating and air. Now below your heating and air functions, you do have a nice little tray here. Now in higher trims, I believe this actually is a wireless charger, but in the base model, this is not charging my phone, but you do have a couple outlets so you can charge your phone. You've got a type C port and a type A port. The type A port is capable of data. And then you've got a, a cool little made in Dearborn, Michigan Ford badge. Looks nice, a little bit of style points there. Again, these grab handles, you can add on accessories. You can change them out for different colors really neat but then you've got your gear selector with a little pony on it pretty cool it does actually have a manual option so if you shift it into manual you've got these buttons on the left hand side of the shifter and that allows you to manually shift your gears now one of the best things about the bronco that everybody raves about is the goat modes you've got tons of different drive modes in here aside from two high four high four low and four wheel drive automatic and then you've also got a trail cruise control essentially so if you've got it in four high or four low you can set this and you can rock crawl automatically without touching the gas or brake pretty awesome but for the modes themselves you do have sport mode which gives you a little bit more throttle response and different shifting and then you've got your slippery mode for your wet conditions You've got your mud mode for if you're off-roading in the mud, and then you got your sand mode if you're out there doing some Baja, and then of course you got eco in normal mode. So eco if you want to save a little bit of gas, but however, surprisingly, the Bronco isn't all that terrible on gas. Now, like I mentioned, we don't have any window controls on our doors and no side view mirror controls either. So you've got this interesting little switch here where you can control your different side view mirrors and adjust those and it is all rubber that way you know it's safe from the elements and then of course you've got your window controls here in the center now these are all one button operations so you just push them and they do what you want them to do now in the center we do have a locking center console 
with relatively adequate storage as well. You get, it's pretty deep in there. And it's also, I mean, it fits like half my arm. And then it's also got another 12 volt outlet. Now, aside from all of that down below here, there's even more magic up towards the top. We've got a front differential locker, a rear differential locker, and then you've got a tight turn mode as well, which I just tried out. It's pretty cool. And then you got your traction control and hazards. Awesome. Now, beyond all of those though, you've got a mounting point here for a GoPro or your phone or whatever you want to stick there. And then you've also got these different little cubbies where you can set things and then don't put anything in here because that's your, your vent. But nonetheless, got some storage up here and it's really cool that you they give you a spot to mount things awesome and then you've got an automatic dimming rear view mirror some dome light controls your sos button and a place to keep your shades what's really cool we're not going to take them off today but what's really cool is how easily these roofs come off it's this easy one two three four and then it just pushes up easy peasy you can have all you can have all of these panels off in the matter of minutes, not a problem. Now the rear of the Bronco is basically the same as the front, except it's got some more capabilities. The doors are just the same. You've got a net and no window functions because the doors, once again, they are completely removable. But on the rear of the seats here, you've got some mole panels as well as some more netting. Very cool. I love these panels. Very easy to set things up. I actually put them in my car aftermarket. This one comes with them. Again, you've got the really nice rubber floor mats so that when you're all filthy from off-roading, no problem very nice seats again it's that marine grade vinyl so it should last in the weather but hopping in tons of room not a problem at all there get a nice little center spot here for your cups not too bad would have liked a little bit extra of room so that like i can put my elbow on it but that's not too bad but then in the center at the back here you've got your window controls as well as a type c port a type a port and a 110 volt outlet so fantastic but in the rear overall you've got tons of headroom really tons of leg room really and yeah actually the two-door version is about the same right here where it really loses is in the rear you lose about like 50 percent of the cargo space but overall the rear seats on the four-door version and the two-door version are basically the same so if you want more of that two-door look you're not losing out on the back at least and you can still fit a couple adults Another great thing about the rear is how much space and how flat they get when you do end up dropping the seats. I mean, it's not perfectly flat, but you it, it's relatively flat and you get a good amount of storage space if you need to move things or anything like that. Not too bad at all, if I may say so myself. And aside from that, that's not all we have. Below the seats also, where the cross members are to keep the seats stable, you could also store things in this area as well. But that about wraps up the interior and exterior of the 2024 Ford Bronco. So how about we hop in the driver's seat and see how she does on the road. All right, now we're behind the wheel of the 2024 Bronco Big Bend Edition. And yeah, I mean, it's quite comfortable. I, I like the seat, despite it not being leather and super plushy or even powered or anything like that. It's actually quite comfortable. You know, the seating position is fantastic. Very comfortable. Um, visibility is really good. You know, you've got basically windows along the entirety of this thing, though, so no surprise there. And of course, with these 31 inch tires on it, you're like the king of the road. You're sitting so high. You know, I, I love big SUVs and this one's no different. Now, one distinct thing that I can feel right off the bat when driving this Bronco Big Bend is that it doesn't feel like a boat. Okay, like when you're driving like say a Jeep or something, it just kind of like floats all over the road and it's kind of difficult sometimes to even keep it going straight. Now with this Bronco, it, it handles quite well. And also, you know, I've got it in sport mode right now and the acceleration is fantastic on it too. So no complaints there. Now, if you do opt for say 35 inch tires and uh, the suspension upgrade, you will get much worse brake performance. But even with these 30 one inch tires the brake performance is not bad one thing that just about everybody that has test drove one of these broncos or owns one is complaining about and i can understand why especially now that i'm driving it is the road noise road noise and wind noise are plentiful on this you know you do actually have insulated roof panels but 
because of those panels, the weather stripping on the windows doesn't meet quite right. So a lot of air is sneaking in through there. You can hear it. Sometimes I can even feel it, but not right now, actually. It must be catching it right, but tons of road noise. A lot of that is to contributed to because of our very large tires though but it's definitely there it's present but it's made for the outdoors person you know they want to take off the roofs they want to take off the doors they want to hit the trail they're not really going to care too much about the road noise also lots and lots of engine noise the engine is very noisy it's hard for this four-cylinder engine to push this big old truck around uh, so josh you just mentioned like how big is this Bronco is so do you know how much it weighs yeah, it's actually like 4,500 pounds, which is you know, quite a bit. That's almost half ton. Yeah. What about the towing capacity? You know, people take it off or they, they probably want to tow something. Right. You got to be able to tow your side by side or your trailer or something, yeah. right? Well, you know, you might have a hard time actually fitting that into your lineup when you're trying to get ready to hit the road in this because it can only tow 3,500 pounds. Wow. You know, it's about the same as like a Jeep, but it's definitely beaten by like the Forerunner and, and other comparable vehicles. All right. Now let's see how zero to 60 is in this 2024 Bronco Big Bend. We've got it in sport mode and we've got our race box set up so we get an accurate time. Let's see how she does. Definitely hear the engine putting in work. So we hit 60 in eight seconds flat. We had 30 in 3.44 seconds. Now, like I mentioned earlier, apparently you actually get different engine performance considerably when you put higher octane fuel in this. We don't know what kind of fuel this currently has in it, but maybe it'd be a little bit faster if you put some premium in there. But all in all, not too bad for a 4,500 pound vehicle with only a four cylinder in it. On paper, it says 7.1 second, but they didn't mention like what fuel they put in. Yeah, so it's not too far off. It's not place. too far, yeah. Especially with two people in it, probably less than adequate conditions. Yeah, and I'm assuming they put the cheap fuel in it. <laughs> right. I'm assuming that there's cheap fuel in it. It's probably 80, low octane, 89, 89 maybe. Yeah. Maybe 80, even worse, 87. <laughs> probably 87. <laughs> but still, eight seconds, not too bad. Nothing I would complain about, that's for certain. I mean, it's an off-road vehicle, not a race vehicle. Well, if you want to race one, you can get a Raptor. Yeah, <laughs> that one is quite a bit faster. How about we have Uncle Steve hop in the driver's seat so he can tell us how this Ford Bronco is able to even get eight seconds at 4,500 pounds. Let us know about the powertrain. And of course, I want to know what he thinks about the drive. Well, it's time for Uncle Steve behind the wheel right now. Well, before I go over the powertrain, Ford offered nine models for this Bronco. Not only that, they offer so ton of accessory, option, feature. Whatever you think of it, they have it. For example, you can choose rear axle ratio, gear ratio on the base model. So that's really perfect for people who really do serious off-roading, like Josh. <laughs> no, that is crazy though. I've never I've never heard of ordering a specific gear, gear ratio yeah. from the manufacturer. That's crazy. And then also they have an option for wear diff lock for the base model. A lot of the manufacturers don't even offer for the base model. They offer like a high up models. So that's really good. So let's go over the powertrain. Also they offer three different engines and two different transmission. So today I'm gonna just focus on this big band model. So this model equipped with 2.3 liter inline six Eagle Boost engine, which means it has a turbo charge. The horsepower is ranged from 275 to 300 horsepower. 300, which is you put the premium gas, 91 octane or above. And then the 275, that means you put cheap octane, like I always do. <laughs> Chip gas, uh, like always do, 89 and below. And it, this affects the uh, performance. Yeah, that's crazy. A 25 horsepower jump just for using premium fuel. Yeah, actually, it's a good, it's a smart option. You know, back to the old day, you know, turbo turbo car is you can you can only put premium. But the technology they they did uh, like a dynamic like 
engine management. So they can just adjust the, uh, the timing. So it's, it's great, so, you know, for people like me, cheap. I just put cheap gas in it. Yeah. So for the torque, the, the number is from 315 foot pounds to 325. Also depends what kind of fuel you put in. Let's move on to the dry train. For this one, this model is a seven speed automatic. And they also offer a seven speed manual transmission. In my opinion, that's crazy. Normally they don't have seven speed for for SUV or off-road vehicle, you know. Most of the time they're for race car, high performing vehicle like the C7 Corvette or the Aston Martin or even Porsche. But they offer this with seven speed manual, which is probably the cheapest vehicle you can find with the seven speed, you know. That's awesome. That's awesome. However, they only offer with the 2.3 liter, not with the V6 or not with the 2.7 V6. I think it's fine. If you do off-roading like Josh said, you're not racing it, you know. If you want to uh, speed, go get the Raptor. Yeah. So for the mile per gallon, it use 20 in the city and 21 on the highway. For this big, big ass car, 4,500 4, pounds, I think it's fine. Yeah, that's actually really good. Yeah, and the CO to 60, roughly 7.5 to 8 seconds. Yeah. That is not bad. It's so much better than my Land Cruiser. <laughs> All right, let's move on to how I feel about this car. The design, I love the design, it's really classic. Um, I wish they have OJ edition with white and cone bumper, but unfortunately they don't. <laughs> but if they do, I don't think anybody's gonna buy it. <laughs> so I like the fine grill design, it looks really classic with the round headlights. In fact, they have a heritage edition for this. It looks very classic, right? Yeah. How much is that? For, how much is it for that that uh, Heritage model? Well, Heritage Edition falls in the middle of the pack in terms of the trim levels, and that one actually is fifty thousand four hundred and fifty. Oh, what about this one? Well, man, Steve, there's nine different trim levels, like you mentioned. So it's I'll great. just I'll just run through them all. For the one that we're driving today, which actually is a pretty awesome, capable, and well thought out vehicle, it comes in at forty one thousand five hundred and twenty five dollars, and then you've got the next step up, which is the Black Diamond, which is 45225 Then you've got the Outer Banks, which is 49835 Then there's the Heritage. Then you got the Badlands at 51990 Everglades at 57415 Wild Track at 62120 And then you've got the Heritage Limited Edition, which is 71580 And then to top it off, <laughs> to finish off the lineup for the 20 24 Broncos, you have the Raptor, which comes in at over $90,000. Well, I bet that's a uh, pasta uh, deal markup. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I, I bet they don't have many of them. And that's actually been the complaint that many people have had about the, uh, the Bronco, is that dealers just don't have them. There's a low stock, so they're hard to get. Yeah, well, seeing you mentioned, don't mistaking the Bronco Sport. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is nothing like the Bronco Sport. It is way more capable, way better in every way. I really like the cheap one, like this one, 40 grand. I would get a manual transmission because I do like driving stick shape, even in like traffic. Yeah. So it's really reasonable price. No, it's actually amazing for what you get. I mean, yeah, for what you get and the add-ons that you can put on top of it and the accessories aftermarket and everything, I mean, it's really taking the cake to knock Jeep out of its, its mind. Yeah, but not for everyone. For example, this, the thing I don't really like in the car is the noise, but I think it's okay, like, because I do, like, a, feel like a classic feeling, yeah. like, raw, like, you don't have a lot of insulation. Pretty much it's like the car that built in 1960. Yeah. They don't put a lot of insulation in it. So... I kind of like it, but for some people, they may not like it, yeah. you know. The space is great, you know. The visibility is so great too, you know. You sit up high, it's like, I feel like I can run over people, <laughs> you know, or cars. And then the gas mileage, so overall, I really like it. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of value in this $40,000 trim level. I'm, you know, like when you look at other options in the market, you're going to spend at least like 20K more yeah. for something comparable. So, 
it's definitely huge value and especially with front and rear lockers yeah you know yeah that's a must for all folding right yes so what, what do you think about this Bronco? I like it a lot. I'm, I would buy one. Will you, which one will you buy? I really like the Heritage model, but it's a little bit pricey. And yeah. the web, the, it's nice. It's wider, they have wider fender, you know, fender fairing. But it's just 90 grand plus the markup, it's just too crazy, you know. If I was just looking for something that was trail ready and like was good quality and everything like that, I would just go with the Big Bend because it's trail ready. You've got all the different aftermarket options that you can add on to it. And yeah, it's like perfect for just going out right away. And you can just drive daily too, right? Yeah. You can put regular gas on daily. Right. So there you have it. In conclusion, we absolutely love the Ford Bronco. You should definitely go check one out, especially if you're into off-roading or if you like going and hitting the beach or anything like that. You know, it's very well built. It's very well thought out. It's got a lot of nice features and it's extremely capable. You know, maybe you're thinking about getting a Jeep, but go check out the Bronco too. Smash up the likes, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next video.